Hello, I'm Sam Goldman from the Department of Clinical Research at the Parkinson's Institute in Sunnyvale, California. I'm going to describe the findings and implications of our recent publication in the Annals of Neurology entitled Head Injury, Alpha-Synuclein Rep1, and Parkinson's Disease. As most of you know, the cause of most Parkinson's disease is unknown. Known single gene mutations are responsible for a few percent of cases, but penetrance is incomplete. Genome-wide association studies have identified more common single nucleotide polymorphisms that are associated with modestly increased risk, but most people with these polymorphisms don't develop Parkinson's. Known environmental causes are also rare. Epidemiologic studies have identified common environmental risk factors, but again, most people with these exposures do not develop Parkinson's. Therefore, most Parkinson's disease likely results from a combination of genetic and environmental factors. The central role of synuclein protein is well established. It's the primary constituent of Lewy bodies and neurites, and high levels are associated with increased PD risk. REP1 is a variable length dinucleotide repeat near the synuclein gene promoter. There are three primary repeat lengths we'll call short, medium, and long. Long variants are associated with higher levels of synuclein protein and a 30% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. The short variant is associated with lower levels of synuclein protein and a 30% decreased risk of PD. There are approximately 2 million head injuries annually in the United States. Head injury is associated with Parkinson's disease in many, but not all, epidemiologic studies. In animal models, head injury has been shown to increase levels of synuclein, and elevated synuclein has also been found in several small human postmortem studies. We hypothesized that the long variant of REP1, in conjunction with head injury, might have a synergistic effect because both can increase synuclein protein levels. We tested this hypothesis in two independent case control studies. We drew the first population from the agricultural health study comprised of farmers and their spouses in Iowa and North Carolina. There were 90 cases and 330 controls. The other population drew patients from eight North American movement disorders clinics and consisted of 390 cases and 160 controls. We collected information on head injury and covariates by interview and subjects were genotyped for synuclein REP1. We tested the interaction between head injury and REP1 using logistic regression and adjusted for age, gender, race, and smoking. We analyzed the results both separately and pooled. In both studies, we found that head injury was associated with a modest but non-significant increased PD risk. As expected in both studies, the long REP1 allele was associated with a modest, though non-significant, increased risk, and the short allele with a modest, though non-significant, decreased risk of PD. However, in both studies, the joint effect of head injury and REP1 was profound. Head injury was not associated with risk in those carrying the short or medium REP1 alleles. But in those with the long REP1 allele, head injury was associated with a three-and-a-half to six-fold increased risk of PD. This interaction was highly significant with a p-value less than 0.01. This result is highly plausible. Biologically, both head injury and long REP1 increase synuclein levels and aggregation. Epidemiologically, we found similar results in two independent studies. These findings are consistent with the hypothesis that most Parkinson's disease results from environmental exposures in genetically susceptible individuals. Long synuclein REP1 is common. It occurs in approximately 10% of individuals, and we know that head injuries are exceedingly common. Therefore, this constitutes a large population that is potentially at very high risk of Parkinson's disease. Of note, head injury preceded PD diagnosis by approximately 30 years, suggesting that a therapeutic agent could potentially delay or prevent Parkinson's disease in this population. This work highlights the need to investigate the joint effects of genetic and environmental risk factors for Parkinson's disease. Work should focus on genetic and environmental factors that share common disease mechanisms. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Carolyn Tanner at the Parkinson's Institute and Dr. Freya Camel at the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, who are the primary leaders of these projects. 
I'd also like to thank the investigators of both the FAME and SEARCH projects, in particular, the study subjects and our funders. Thank you very much.